Assassin's Creed Mirage launches in a few days, being the next entry in what is becoming one of Ubisoft's longest-running franchises. In a series spanning over 15 years and running, things have changed a lot, and players are understandably clamoring for a return to what made these games so special in the first place. While I know a lot of fans would say the Ezio trilogy were some of their favorite games in the series, my personal favorite has always been the first Assassin's Creed. It established so much of the identity of these games, and yet did so many things that we never saw expanded on either, until now. So in this video, I'd like to look at how Assassin's Creed Mirage is bringing the series back to its roots, and expanding on those original ideas, by analyzing three specific aspects of this entry, those being the presentation, gameplay, and themes. Just looking at Assassin's Creed Mirage, the inspiration for the visual motifs are apparent. From the design of the environments, to the NPCs walking around, and even Basim himself, so much of the game harkens back to the very first Assassin's Creed. The streets are cluttered with people, carts full of goods, even animals and children can be seen walking around. The city feels alive in a way that recent entries like Valhalla and Odyssey have failed to achieve, and while it's far from perfect, I'd be lying if I said it didn't remind me of walking through the streets of Jerusalem. Mirage's representation of Baghdad in the mid-800s feels like the Animus received an update from the one we've seen in Abstergo's headquarters in Rome, and could more accurately represent the time period it sends users back to, where more recent games feel empty in comparison, as if the Animus simply forgot to load in any of the atmosphere. Not only that, but Basim's design is a fantastic throwback to Altair, with his apprentice robes accented by a blue cloth and his leather belt adorned with throwing knives and other utilities. Over the course of the game, we'll get to witness Basim's progress as an assassin represented visually by changes in his outfit. While we didn't see this in Assassin's Creed 1, AC2 had Altair's armor available for Ezio to collect, and by brotherhood it represented his growth into becoming the master assassin we all know him as today. These are great callbacks to the first few games, but the developers took things one step further. Players will be able to use a nostalgic visual filter option, giving the game the same desaturated blue-gray color palette present in the original entry, driving home that return to series roots. This isn't some reshade preset mod that you have to seek out and download on your own. This is built into the experience, designed and implemented by the developers to show that they're as big of fans of the original as we are. For those of you who haven't played it, or may not remember, the gameplay of the original Assassin's Creed had four main pillars, those being combat, stealth, the assassinations, and traversal. Without mincing words, the combat could be incredibly challenging at times, especially before unlocking the counter-kill move. You had to make sure you were attacking with a rhythm, dodging or blocking when possible, and breaking out of being grabbed, all while trying to position yourself in a way that wouldn't let enemies surround you. Could you take on smaller groups of enemies? Sure, but it wasn't the optimal way to go about things, running headfirst into situations and hoping you don't get overwhelmed. So there was a larger emphasis placed on stealth gameplay, one which Assassin's Creed Mirage is putting at the forefront of the experience. Not only is there a return to the social stealth aspects of the first game, with Basim being able to sit on benches to hide and blend in with crowds, but there's a mix of newer stealth additions to the franchise, like freely crouching to stay quiet and move fast, as well as hiding behind smaller objects for cover. These mechanics for combat and stealth blend together to prop up the third pillar of gameplay, the assassinations. As the series went on, many of the assassinations strayed from how they were handled in the first game. Rather than showing up to a mission marker and having a predetermined route to a target with only one way to take them out, Assassin's Creed 1 made players put in the legwork for those missions, and it's something Mirage embraces too. Players have to travel around the city, scouting out areas of interest. Through a mix of various smaller tasks, such as pickpocketing or eavesdropping, you'll gather information about your target, such as what they may look like, where they'll be at certain times, what their goals in those locations are, etc. Once you have enough information, you can engage in the final assassination mission itself, which falls a lot more closely in line with the black box design of the first game than anything else. You can achieve your objective stealthily, only revealing yourself when you're about to go in for the kill, or you can run in loud and test your might with the combat system but the mission doesn't have a fail state for being detected, only ending when the job is done. So your target is taken care of, in whatever way you see fit, but now the enemy knows you're there and you have to escape. This is where the traversal system comes into play. I won't sit here and tell you that the parkour is as good as the first game. It's a different kind of system, running on a newer game engine designed to have a lower barrier to entry, and unfortunately that includes a lower skill ceiling as a byproduct. Despite the marketing suggesting how momentum-based the parkour in this entry is, it's purely animation-based momentum. You're not as in control as you used to be. 
With that being said, there has been a shift back in that direction, just not as much of one as we'd have hoped. There are plenty of ways to move throughout Baghdad, with Mirage incorporating aspects from many of the older titles, having elevator-like structures allowing players to quickly ascend to the rooftops, and now including its own expansion of that concept with the pole vault to quickly move between buildings. I do wish we could go back to the days where players were able to fully express themselves with the movement system, pulling off some absolutely crazy moves on the fly because they understood the depth of the parkour. However, Mirage's traversal isn't bad by any means. It's ultimately a step in the right direction, but I'd like to see it taken even further in the next entry. Before the series went off the rails, the story of Assassin's Creed was a fairly grounded one, and this is evident in how the first game approached its discussion of the Creed itself. Over the course of the game, Altair returns back to his mentor, Al Molin, and after each of his assassinations, they converse about what the target said, the meaning of the Creed, the different philosophies of the factions at the time, and more. As Al Molim continues to dodge Altair's questions, feeding him answers with no substance, chasing topics into circles, this brings in themes of loyalty to one's master as well. All of these conversations are handled incredibly well, written in such a believable manner that they don't even feel written so much as they feel like you're eavesdropping on a real philosophical argument, with ideals that clash as much as their blades soon will. In Assassin's Creed Mirage, we get to watch Basim grow from a street thief to a master assassin, and in doing this we also get to see him ask many of the same questions Altair did during the first game. We get to see him work towards understanding the Creed as an apprentice, having similar conversations with his own mentor, and fully internalize it over the course of his journey to becoming a master. The developers even fought to include Alamut, which holds massive significance to both the in-game lore and the real-world history of assassins. These themes are not exclusive to Assassin's Creed 1 and Mirage, they do appear throughout much of the franchise, but the way they're handled in Mirage being such a core part of the overall experience is truly a callback to the first game. Assassin's Creed was my first big step into what at the time was the next generation of gaming. Everything about it captured my attention for hours on end, from presentation that I would argue still holds up to this day, to an open-ended gameplay loop that almost felt like a historical version of the Hitman franchise, and a story filled with themes about philosophy, free will, and loyalty that had the potential to rival even the Metal Gear franchise. As time went on and the series evolved, I think Ubisoft lost touch with what made Assassin's Creed such an amazing game in the first place. I know there are plenty of people out there who truly enjoy the RPG focus of the franchise as of late, but I don't fall into that camp of people, and if you're watching this video, I don't think you do either. With Assassin's Creed Mirage, there is a lot to be excited for. I see a development team listening to feedback from the fans, implementing features specifically for people who enjoyed the first title all those years ago. I see a return to form in the gameplay loop that hooked me from the moment I booted up my copy of the original back on Xbox 360. And I see a story that shares many of the same themes that made us fall in love with Altair and his journey across the Holy Land. Assassin's Creed Mirage may still have some RPG elements, it may not allow for player expression through the movement system in the same way the series used to, and the modern day story is still the same mess it's been since the end of Assassin's Creed 3. But with that being said, there are clear efforts being made to turn the clock back. So for the fans like myself wanting to see Assassin's Creed return back to the series' roots, anxiously awaiting the arrival of Assassin's Creed Mirage and hoping it does that, all I can say is, have a little faith. <laughs>